Today we're going to look at how to find the definite integral of a piecewise function. Remember the definite integral represents the signed area and a piecewise function means it's broken up into several pieces. All right, so for example one, we have f of x equals x squared plus x for x is less than zero. So that's our first piece. Our second piece is f of x equals sine of x whenever x is greater than or equal to zero. So again, that's what makes a piecewise function is broken up into two pieces. You know, the question is, how do we find the definite integral or the signed area of this function? Let's take a look. So the way to formally write that is we're going to evaluate the definite integral of f of x from negative 3 to 3 pi over 2. Now, keep in mind the different pieces overlap at 0. Okay, so one piece is for x is less than 0, one is for bigger than or equal to 0. What I want to do is take a look at the graph of this function to see what it looks like. So if we start at negative 3, we see that the area under the curve of the graph is going to look like this. Now our first piece is um, x squared plus x, for x is less than 0. So that is a quadratic function. We can see that this function crosses the x-axis at negative 1. All right, so the signed area is going to look like this from negative 3 to 0 for our first piece. Our second piece, which is sine of x, is a trig function. We want to find its area from 0 to, and just confirm here, 3 pi over 2. All right, so 3 pi over 2 as a decimal is a little bit bigger than 4 and a half. The question is, how do we find this signed area of this piecewise function? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you might think because the signed area from negative 3 to 0 of our first function, we can just find the definite integral of from negative 3 to 0. Same thing for our second piece. We can find the signed area of this by going from 0 to 3 pi over 2. That's pretty much all you have to do. Let's read this together. As you can see, all you need to do is determine the definite integral of each piece of this function, then add up the definite integrals. All right, so where's your stopping point or where's your middle ground? It's at zero. So you're going to find the definite integral of this function from negative 3 to 0, and then you're going to find the definite integral of this function from 0 to 3 pi over 2, since that's what we're concerned with. So the way you can think of it is, but you can think of this as, um, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit more so we can see the whole thing. Okay. Zero is kind of like the in-between ground. So you do have your definite integral from negative 3 to 3 pi over 2, but zero is where they meet in between. So what we're going to do is determine the definite integral of each piece of the function. We're going to break up the integral based on that piece that they, um, where they meet, so at 0. And again, the reason they meet at 0, just going back to the piecewise function, is because the first piece is for x is greater than 0, and the next is for x is, sorry, the first piece is for x is less than 0, the second is for x is greater than or equal to 0. So our first integral is going to be from negative 3 to 0 of x squared plus x. The next one's going to be from 0 to 3 pi over 2 for a sign of 2x. It's going to look just like this. Okay. So the question is, now all we have to do is just integrate that first piece, uh, then integrate the second piece, and add our answer up. All right. So what is the integral of the first piece? Well, this is the reverse power rule, so it's going to be 1 3rd x cubed. Integral uh, antiderivative of negative x is negative 1 half x squared, reverse power rule. No plus c needed because it's a definite integral. We're just going to put our upper and lower bound of our first integral, drop it down here. The next antiderivative of sine of 2x, this one is... Uh, requires a little bit more insight. We haven't done u substitution yet with um, definite integrals. 
But think about this for a second. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, right? However, there is a 2x here. In order to accommodate for that, when we take the antiderivative, you're going to have to you have to see that if you were to take the derivative of just negative cosine of 2x, you'd get negative you'd get uh, negative. Well, you'd actually get positive sine of 2, 2x times 2 using the chain rule. So to accommodate for that, you have to insert this negative 1 half in here. That way, if you take the derivative of this, you get sine of 2x back. However, we'll explain more of that when we go through the um, new substitution. For and again, you're just going to drop these upper and lower limits down. And so now what we're showing is that the whole integral is just the integral definite integral of these two pieces put together. Again, the way that looks graphically, I think it helps to just keep looking back. Here is our first integral from negative 3 to 0 of x squared plus x, I think it was. Se second definite integral is 0 to 3 pi over 2 of sine of 2x. All right, so we will evaluate each of those definite integrals. First one, we will plug in 0 for our upper limit and subtract uh, when we plug in negative 3 for our lower limit. The next definite integral, we will plug, we will plug in 3 pi over 2 into our antiderivative for our upper limit. Then we will plug in 0 for our lower limit and subtract that. Now this right here is pretty simple in zero, so it's going to become zero. However, we'll have to do some math here. Negative three cubed is negative 27. Negative three squared is nine. And then if you notice the two and the two here and the two on the bottom is going to cancel, just leave you with three pi, and this is going to become cosine of zero. Simplifying it even further, we have one third of negative 27, which is negative nine. One half of nine is nine halves. And then we have cosine of 3 pi, which is going to be 1. It's the same as cosine of, I'm sorry, negative 1. It's going to be the same as cosine of pi. You have negative 1 half times negative 1. And then here you have cosine of 0, which is positive 1. Make sure you're careful about your negatives, which is why, again, when you're evaluating definite integrals, always use brackets and parentheses to illustrate what, especially when you're subtracting those negatives, will end up distributing. So we have one third negative 27, which is negative 9. And moving on down here, we have negative 9 plus 9 halves. We'll evaluate that in a second, I guess. First, we'll just uh, make both of these negatives positive. So it's positive 1 half. And then finally, we will multiply this in. That's going to be negative negative 1 half. So you end up with negative 9. Actually, that's a positive 9 because it's negative, negative 9. So positive 9 hmm. and then the negative right here, I almost uh, missed this, it will also distribute to the 9 halves here and it will become negative 9 halves. And then you got plus 1 half and then negative negative 1 half is plus 1 half as well. All right. This. So basically all you have to do now is just turn 9 into something over 2. It's going to be 18 over 2 minus 9 halves plus 1 half plus 1 half. So just do the top. 18 minus 9 is 9 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. And that is your signed area or the definite interval from negative 3 to 3 pi over 2 of this uh, piecewise function, which is 5.5. So for step 2, you're just adding up those definite integrals of each piece. Um, so it's a very simple process. Again, it's um, when you find the definite integral of a piecewise function, you just break it up um, based on that piece that they where they meet, and then you find the definite integral based on your limits. And this is what the final answer looks like. As far as five and a half goes, the answer is 5.5, which is your signed area, which basically means that, yes, you do have some negative area, but the positive area far outweighs the negative, and you end up with five and a half as your definite interval. If you have any other questions about definite integral piecewise functions, let me know.